Buster, what do you think? Hey, Buster's friends just came and played a little. Now we're gonna get on to our work. Gotta set the timing back on the Superdog. It was set at 25 degrees, which was a little aggressive. Kind of sounded like a pulling truck, saying I'm a little afraid of it, to be honest. So, gonna turn that back to 20, I'm thinking. But what we're doing, this is a different injection pump. Just to show you. This hole is the top. When you're on number one firing, it'll be facing up on the pump. So what I'm gonna do, there's a little cover on top. I'll get the hood open, you'll see. There's a little cover on top of the tower you pull off. And then you can tell by the indicator where the number one cylinder is, but this will make sure you're on number one firing and not number one of the end of the exhaust stroke. So go ahead and flip the hood up on the old girl. What do you think, Buster? So that index mark down in there, I don't know if we got a light. You have marks on the damper. And that index mark shows you how many degrees you are before top dead center. This cover here covers the front of that hub on the pump. Where you can see the hole. And then there's a plug. There's a plug down in behind the tack. Pipe plug. This guy right here. You pull that out and you can get a socket in to get to the bolts on the front of that hub. And that allows the gear to turn separate of the drive hub. Basically when you take that pipe plug out, you're gonna get in and loosen these three bolts. Now, you have to do this as you turn it because the pipe plug is only lined up with the top one. So while you're looking at this hole, you can get to this one, but you have to loosen these two up before you get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull that cover off and pull the tack drive because without the tack drive coming off, it's really hard to get down in there to be able to get on that pipe plug. So pull the tack drive, pull that pipe plug and the little cover off the top of the tower and see where we're at. And then we'll start rolling it over and loosening those bolts. And uh, as we get up to being on number one, well, you want to loosen that one last so you don't lose your position. That gets you set up to adjust the timing. When we actually go to set the timing, we'll have to pull the number one delivery valve, which I'll show you on the truck. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what do you think about that, Otis? You think maybe we should go ahead and grab us a 7 16th? This fella right here. Get all this pinch on. Seven sixteenths, we'll take this cover off. So you can see down in there, right now, the hole on the hub is not facing up. That pipe plug covers the bolts that tighten the gear onto the hub. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull the tachometer cable off and then pull the tack drive off. You see that stud and nut sticking out down in there? There's like a fork deal that holds the tack drive in. You can take that nut off. I don't know if you have to take it clear off. I usually end up doing it all the way off. And you can pull that fork out of there, pull the tack drive out. That way you can get on that pipe plug and get your socket and ratchet down in there to get on that bolt that holds the gear on. So I just have the bar and the engine over with the, with the pry bar up in the fan. And so that, on the back of that hub, see that bump out? That means there's a bolt there. And what you need to get that bolt is a 3 8 12 point socket in that plug hole. 
And we'll just go ahead and rock the engine back and forth a little bit with the bar. Like right there, it'll the socket will drop on. But it's just only in so many spots it'll do that. And like I said, you want to make sure that the one with the hole on it to set the timing, you want to do that guy last. Because that means you're going to be up on number one firing. And that's where you're going to want to adjust for port closure. Okay. Coming up on next hub there. So I'm going to take this socket, put it in there. Bar the engine back and forth a little bit. There it goes. So I'm gonna loosen that one up. Okay, that one's loose. Now I'm gonna back up to the number one. The biggest thing is when you actually set your timing to number one, you want to be turning in the, the right direction. That way the backlash will be out of those gears. So we're going to turn it past where that hole was in the hub and then come back on it because I'm turning the engine backwards right now. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to loosen that bolt up because moving it since we're moving the timing i think it's going to depend on where that bolt can line up at and loosen that guy up and i and i would recommend if you're going to take the injection pump off always park it bar the motor over so you know you're on number one firing so the easiest way to tell that is to pull this cover off and make sure you see that hole in the hub so now that's loose so we're going to go ahead and put the engine where we want it these marks on the damper will tell you how far you are before top dead center now i have painted that bottom black mark with the white paint mark on the outside that's zero degrees. That's top dead center. So then the big ticks are five. So you have five, ten. So right now we're setting at 24 degrees. Just happened to be where we landed. So I'm going to roll it forward. And this is where I said you want to be turning it like we are. We're coming up on it from a, you know, above where you want to be. So five, ten. So that right there, that's 20 degrees right there where we're sitting. I'm gonna go ahead and set this at like 19. Yeah. So. Right there's 18. Yeah, let's go with 18. I've, I've been running this thing around 1920 before I tried turning it up and it did help lower my EGTs but you really had to keep it wound out the low side was not there so much and you just had to keep her wound for sound and that's just not really how i like to run it so i'm gonna take the timing back down probably a little easier on the head gasket just gotta just gotta always watch the pyro this thing does have marine injectors in it so it is uh it's putting the fuel to her you just you gotta be easy on the old right foot with her So before we pull the delivery valve apart, I'm gonna take the inlet fuel line to the injection pump coming back from the secondary fuel filter. I'm gonna take that line off. I'm gonna take air and blow through the galley so it'll just blow it back out the return to the tank. That way we get all the fuel out of there so that once we pull that delivery valve and we start blowing air through, we won't get a bath in fuel. So all I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and remove that fuel line and blow it out with compressed air. All right, so. A little relief valve to protect you on that front though. You won't explode. So now that that's out, 
I'm going to do is go ahead, take this number one injection line off, and then you're going to take your crescent wrench and pull the delivery valve off. So that's the big hex. This big hex here. It may be on there with some mustard, but it really doesn't need to be that tight. But go ahead and grab a crescent wrench if you're me, or the right size wrench if you really care. And pull that off, and then this body and the delivery valve and everything will be in there. Just be very careful, there's a little spring. You don't want to drop that. Or at least, you know, track where it goes so you can find it and clean it. And I'll be without one. So go ahead and break that loose. So I went ahead and busted that loose with an 18 inch crescent. And see, that's the little spring I'm talking about. This part of the body, see it just kind of slides in that nut. That's where your fuel line connects. Also, be sure to keep all this stuff clean. Try not to just drop it on the ground. So your delivery valve, you pull the spring out. The delivery valve is this little plunger deal in here. You can get your fingers on it. Kind of looks like a valve and a carburetor. What that's doing is it's kind of a check valve in the injection pump. The spring's holding down and the fuel pressure coming up from the plungers below it so it opens at the right time. It, it Once the plunger starts coming up, it opens once there's pressure, once the fuel passed it. But as soon as the plunger stops, this thing comes back down and keeps fuel pressure in the line. So then at, every time the, it, the plunger's coming up, it doesn't have to make up for that pressure in the line every time it fires. So what we're going to do is pull this out, put it all back together. We're going to put the nut back in and the internals back in. And then we're going to use compressed air to be able to check for port closure. I'm just snugging this back in there. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of tightening. So I put the air on the inlet side of the pump. And we're going to check if air comes out of it at this time. And you can tell that it doesn't. Just very little. So what we're going to do is I'll grab a punch that'll fit in that hole on the hub. And we'll back it off. And at a point, there'll be a bunch of air coming out of that number one. And then as we close the port by advancing the pump from being in a retarded state. As we advance the pump, it will hit that port closure. And then what we're gonna do is once we're there, we'll reach in here with the socket and snug up that bolt on the hub. And that will set the timing. Okay, so I have a 5 16 straight punch. Put it in the hub here. And you can see how I can just move that back and forth. That's the hub moving inside the gears. So now what I'm going to do is take the air. See, when it's all the way towards you, It'll just be open. And you can just kind of put a little air listen and then push the punch away from you. And right there, it quits. So that means we're at port closure at where the engine is set at, which is 18 degrees. So if you want to set it at 25 degrees, you put the engine at 25 degrees on the damper and then do the exact same thing. And you're just setting port closure for right now, wherever the engine is. So at this point, what we're going to do is go ahead, take our 3 8 12 point socket again, and reach in the front here, and tighten up that bolt on the front of the hub. 
and then we're good to go there. Now the only thing that's left to do is we'll turn the motor a you know almost a full rotation, tighten up those other two bolts. We got to put the delivery valve back in and put the line back on and just button up everything else you had to take apart and that's that's all there is to it and that's really all there is to setting the fuel injection on a Mac E9 with an AMBAC injection pump thank you guys for tuning in and good luck with your project Never leave that bar in there. Rookie move. Rookie move. Looks like our starter has more power than a Harbor Freight bar. Whew, got lucky on that one.